Hello friends, I am Dr. Rajesh Chokani, a general pediatrician from Bandra, Mumbai and today we will be talking about indications and interpretation of renal function tests. So the kidneys perform various functions, elimination of nitrogenous wastes, maintenance of fluid electrolyte, acid base and mineral balance, controlling of blood pressure, synthesis and secretion of hormones like erythropoietin and 125T3. So, depending on the primary site of pathology, whether it's glomerular or tubular, these functions are differentially affected and that is why the varied clinical presentations. So patients may come to us with symptoms directly attributable to the kidney, for example gross hematuria or they may come to us with symptoms that are also referable to other organs in the body, the kidney just being one of them, for example edema and hypertension. Besides, oliguria is a common symptom where we often suspect acute glomerular dysfunction. So, Depending on whether there is or isn't a history suggestive of volume depletion, we realize that this oliguria could merely be a result of that volume depletion or it could also represent primary glomerular dysfunction. In all these situations, we need to study renal function. Chronic renal dysfunction can be either glomerular or tubular and is often more subtle in its clinical presentation. Now, affection of growth that is weight, height and energy level and activity all together often suggests chronic infection or chronic organ dysfunction. Chronic infections tend to localize over a period of time and organ dysfunctions like the heart and the liver dysfunction tend to have symptoms attributable to that organ. Therefore, in other words, chronic Affection of growth and well-being without many other prominent symptoms can often be renal dysfunction. When a child presents with growth failure, rickets, with or without clinical signs and symptoms of acidosis, we will suspect tubular dysfunction. But chronic glomerular dysfunction may present merely as short stature or as a, a chronic anemia that doesn't respond to iron or as hypertension or even as a behavior change due to encephalopathy or polyuria and in all these situations we need to have a very high index of suspicion to suspect chronic renal dysfunction as the underlying cause behind these symptoms. Now at times in adults particularly patient may be asymptomatic and unaware and it is only after they detect a raised serum creatinine incidentally in a routinely done blood report or an abnormal urine analysis that alerts us to the presence of hitherto unsuspected renal dysfunction. So friends, what we just spoke about are all the indications we need to evaluate renal dysfunction. The aim is to establish the presence of dysfunction and to try and evaluate its severity. Elucidating the etiology of renal dysfunction needs another set of investigations which we will probably discuss some other time. Now traditionally we have been evaluating renal function by blood urea nitrogen and serum creatinine but the glomerular filtration rate is considered the best overall marker to judge renal function. Therefore clinically we estimate glomerular filtration rate or what is known as EGFR and use this to clinically decide about the presence of renal dysfunction and then to follow up the patient over time for this dysfunction. In children, EGFR is calculated by the Schwartz formula which is basically height in centimeters divided by serum creatinine and the whole thing multiplied by a constant. Now this constant varies with the method of estimation of creatinine in the lab age of the infant or child and sex of the adolescent but for practical purposes for screening in a busy OPD even if we were to round off this constant to 0.5 it's okay because then it makes the equation very simple it becomes half height upon serum creatinine and this gives us the estimated GFR which should normally be 90 to 120 ml per minute per 1.73 meter square. Now, this equation or this estimation of GFR we should be using very regularly in our practice because not all labs 
give age adjusted normal values of serum creatinine so a serum creatinine value which is seemingly normal may actually be abnormal for that child once we calculate by this formula and find that the egfr is already fallen in fact if we wait for the serum creatinine to move into that abnormal range as printed on the lab that wide normal range printed in the lab report it may be too late we need to understand that when the actual glomerular filtration falls we logically expect the serum creatinine to rise but the body compensates in the initial stages by secreting creatinine in the tubules thereby delaying the rise of serum creatinine so what we understand is that even a small rise in serum creatinine from its actual normal represents a significant fall in gfr and when clinical symptoms come up it is already too late the gfr has fallen remarkably so friends there are two very important lessons to be relearned from this one is that we must always pick the height of a child and remember that any faltering of the height can also be due to renal dysfunction in the appropriate setting and the second is we must always interpret the serum creatinine report by calculating the gfr now in adults labs report the gfr of an adult by using a calculator which takes it into account the age and the sex of the adult now both in adults and in children there are select situations where this egfr as calculated from the serum creatinine method may need fine tuning or may need confirmation by calculating egfr from another substance called cystatin c but these situations we will leave it to our super specialist friends as generalists suffice to interpret serum creatinine every time by calculating the egfr now blood urea nitrogen is a poor indicator of glomerular dysfunction because the its production rate is not constant in the body secondly 40 to 50% of the filtered urea is reabsorbed in the proximal tubule so when there is a volume depletion there is a stimulus to reabsorb sodium and water from the proximal tubule and parallelly a lot of urea also gets reabsorbed so in this situation the blood urea nitrogen rises disproportionately to the actual fall in the glomerular filtration or the actual rise in the serum creatinine and therefore the blood urea nitrogen to serum creatinine ratio is a better indicator of poor kidney perfusion due to prerenal causes rather than blood urea nitrogen or serum creatinine alone now Dr. Palni Raman in an earlier video already talked to us about urine routine examination, which also gives us a good idea about kidney function. I will reiterate only a few points. So we must quantify the exact amount of protein urea by measuring the proteins uh, urine spot protein creatinine ratio on a spot sample. This quantifies it fairly accurately, and this is. fairly reasonably correlated with the degree of renal damage in chronic renal disease besides tubular dysfunction can be made out from urine routine examination so a low specific gravity in an early morning sample suggests a poor concentrating ability of the tubules of course diabetes insipidus is a separate matter altogether similarly increased excretion of glucose and amino acids and calcium in the relevant setting or A abnormal urinary ph and interpreted in context with the blood ph in the relevant setting may suggest tubular dysfunction tubular protein urea is usually a low molecular weight protein urea which will not be picked up by the dipstick because the dipstick is sensitive for albumin urea and measurement of beta 2 microglobulin in the urine when it is raised it suggests tubular damage probably due to drugs now coming to some other tests so serum electrolytes may provide an indirect corroboration of renal function so hypokalemia is a common accompaniment of many renal tubular acidosis and hyperkalemia is often seen in patients with low gfr 
obviously these tests are non specific and have to be interpreted in the correct context radionuclide scans of the kidney tell us about differential function of between the two kidneys from the overall total combined function of the two kidneys so the important thing to understand is that this overall function may not be normal it may be actually low but the scan will only tell us of the total function which kidney is doing how much so friends to sum up renal function needs to be assessed in situations where the symptoms are very obviously renal but also in other situations where the symptoms are subtle and we must try and define whether there is glomerular damage and define its extent by using estimated gfr and a protein creatinine ratio in our clinical practices besides other supportive tests thank you very much